Welcome to Literary Friday, episode 68, January 18th, 2019, Getting Familiar with Logic App Function Expressions. So hi, welcome to this first episode in the third year of Middle Earth Friday. It's 2019, and in this episode, I'm going to talk about function expressions inside a Logic App. So these Logic App expressions are there, enabling you to do some um, actions in runtime with your um, incoming data. Um, and there's some other functions um, you can use in general. So there's, you know, string manipulation function, function similar to what you're used to in, in just a regular language like C Sharp. You can work with collections. You can do logical comparisons. You do conversion functions. You know, let's say you get a base 46 encoded uh, message and you can, you know, get that to binary or to strings. So you can do that kind of fun things. There's mathematic functions, simple ones that you can apply and use. You can manipulate and uh, work with date and time functions, and there's some workflow functions. Um, you got URI processing functions, and you got manipulation functions in general. Uh, let's say you want to go from from XML to uh, to JSON or work with J XML or JSON in general. You say, okay, let's add a property or something like that. So this logic app function expressions or logic app expression, you can find a complete document of that on the Microsoft documentation. The URLs right here. So this is where you can find all the information about all these functions. But just, just, you know, let's get a little bit more familiar with these functions. And let's look at a scenario where you have a website that's hosting an app service, kind of taking an order. So you do an order through this um, website and this order eventually ends up in a service bus queue. And then you have a logic app that listens to that queue, picks up the message, does some of the manip manipulation with that order and puts it into an order collection inside a Cosmos DB instance. And it will also archive that message in as a storage. So let's consider this sample input, for instance. So it's an XML message. It comes from the, uh, the website. It enters the queue and it's been picked up by the queue. So this is what enters eventually into the logic app. And it looks a little bit like this. We've got an order ID, name, date, etc. Just a regular order message. So one of the first thing you would do is something like conversion. So you can convert um, from types, data, or format. For instance, you can use this base64 to string. So when a message enters a, a, queue, a service queue and you picked it up from a logic app, in general, it's base64 encoded. So if you want to get that to a string, you can use one of the conversion functions. So what I'm using here is what you see base64 to string. Then this base64 to string, I could then make this into, or convert this into um, XML and then subsequently make that JSON of it so I can for, um, tokenize that message and um, get to the elements basically. So I'm getting from base64 to string to and then a string is an input for the XML and the XML is an input for the JSON. And these are the type of things we can do with these uh, manipulation type of uh, uh, function expressions. Then you have string functions in general. So like I said, you can do uh, all kinds of string manipulation type of function you're used to in a um, language like C Sharp. So you can concatenate, split, replace, substring, all the type of stuff. So with this order message coming in, what we'll do, or you can do something like, okay, I'll concatenate, you know, the first and last name, as in, you know, this will be my customer full name. The other thing I can do is kind of a mathematic function. So I can, in this type of uh, scenario, I can multiply the quantity and the total price, or the, the price of the product and the quantity, and then it will give me the total price. So it's something like you see here below, this type of how this uh, function expression will look like. So multiply, um, since that, you know, XML message when it came in, or at least it didn't have really a schema or anything attached to it. So it got a JSON schema, but eventually it's, it comes in as a complete string. So I have to say, okay, make, the product price and the quantity, bake them both integers. So again, those are conversion type of functions. Then I can do something with the date time. So I can say, okay, order date to UTC, if that's necessary. So I can add that to that message, to the order message going eventually into a Cosmos DB um, instance or into an orders collection. Then you have a workflow function. So you can get the, uh, use these workflow expressions to get details about workflow or um, incident runtime. And you can um, use it for instantiated logic apps, or you can reference outputs from triggers and actions. So there's kind of things you can do with um, those workflow flow functions. So let's look um, 
let's do a particular demo and this is a, a demonstration of a um, walkthrough or a lab you could do you can find a line where you can do travel time or at least calculate it and this is also where you can apply some of those function expressions um, I also show you the or expression as well so let's first look at the um, what I talked about is scenario where the order comes in so the order comes in the intervals every five minutes the order message comes in and here's this um, complete function expression going from base 64 trigger body to XML to JSON then I'll parse it so then I have access to the elements itself and then the elements itself I create this order message to be inserted eventually so you won't see the, the logic app action insertion actually into um, uh, Cosmos DB and I left it out in this type of demo is just to show you what could you do eventually with this message so here you see the concatenation you see the UTC now you see the integer so I make this an integer same as here and here you see the multiplier of the order and subsequently um, I'm creating another message with the workload instance and also the order message itself for archiving purposes so if I go to the overview um, I've worked with this message quite a while so just look at a run how it will look like so the message comes in as you can see the content is base 64 encoded then it will go into this variable that it will create it eventually it goes from base 64 to XML to, to JSON this is how it looks like the JSON then it's being tokenized so I've got access to all the properties from the JSON so basically I've got access to the uh, um, XML elements I can also for instance use XPath type of um, queries if I want but I don't want to do this I want to do it this way and then you can see what I do with the message itself so full name is concatenation and eventually I also archive the message so here you see that base64 encoding again apparently is lost but it should have been should have um, converted that back to a string here you see the instance workflow you got the ID the process type so you can use this also for some kind of logging purposes if you want so this is how it looks like the order process now let's look at the other um, sample I have this is the travel time every morning so this is a scheduler so it runs at um, certain intervals at certain times so I'll mark that the uh, Azure scheduler will be deprecated in the future and they recommend that you use logic app and you use the scheduler um, connector inside of it so this is kind of um, going the way forward and uh, doing scheduling in general on Azure using um, the logic app um, scheduler connector so what I will do next and this is very interesting is that you can get access to Bing Maps and you can say okay I want the address from let's say my house or this is the address of my you know where I used to live to the um, our office in the Netherlands so that's coded the Netherlands this is the office so what it will take and the time to get that um, here is what it will do is create what would be the travel time so you get the route the travel time and you divide it by 15 at least that's what I do here let's have a look travel time duration and as you can see this is a little bit tricky it doesn't sometimes you really have to look or it's divided by 60 that's it so it's divided by not by 15 but I mean by 60 because then it gets into two minutes so if that travel time would be greater than 35 then I want to have an email and the email would say okay travel time subtract to 15 so what would be the travel time or what would be the extra travel time and this will would then be sent to email so let's say I was working from home or at least I start very early and like yeah should I go to the office right now or should I wait a bit let's say I get the email saying hey well your travel time has increased so it's better just to to work a little bit longer from home and then you know after the, the traffic gets a little bit less dense and there you know, there's no jams anymore then I'll travel to the office if of course my agenda would permit that so this is kind of what the demo entails with some of those um, logic app function expressions 
So here you can see and the travel time and, and what well, would have been 38 minutes in general, but you know, there was an added 21, uh, 20 minutes uh, extra travel time. So this is some of the, this is one of the messages I got in the past. So in general, just to think about, hey, so there are stuff, or at least there are some expressions you can apply in a logic app. So in general, you say, okay, it's no codeless. It's, st it's still codeless, but there are some of these type of little bit of functions you can apply and um, making your life easier with the logic app itself. And you can even, you can think about that too, you can even nest those expressions as I showed you um, in the demo a bit. So you can do, you can do that too. If it gets more complex or you need to do some kind of uh, lookup, then you can either use an aggregate function or you can say, okay, we'll call out to an API and get the value back. So when it really gets, if you can't you know, work with the expression in general, it gets too complex or it doesn't really do, do what you require that it does, or those functions are, or the function expression are not sufficient enough, then, you know, think about and something else like an alternative call out to functions. It's seamlessly integrated with our logic apps or um, call out to an API through, uh, let's say, HTTPS. So I like to uh, thank you uh, for watching uh, this uh, this first episode in 2019, and Kent will continue next week. Um, I'll have meet up with him pretty soon, in a couple of days, because I'm traveling up to Phoenix while I meet up with him. So yeah, definitely expect a, a good session next week. Maybe it's in a session with both of us, uh, who knows? But um, Again, thanks for watching and uh, I'll leave you with the uh, music credits.